for community, conversation, and education are combined. I'm your host, Anani. And I'm today's co-host, Thomas. Today we are very excited to be interviewing Mr. Mark Hall, one of Thomas's favorite local experts on marine life and the owner of Biome's Marine Biology Center. Welcome, Welcome Mr. Mr. Hall. Hall. Thank you for having me. I love that show. Mr. Hall, can you tell our viewers a bit about your story of love for marine life and how you turned it into a business? Well, I started it when I was uh, very young, um, exploring uh, exploring the shore and exploring the tide pools. And um, as, I, as I grew up, my interest in it got even stronger and stronger. And I went to school to study um, animals. And then when I uh, when I finished school, I had um, I had teachers ask me if I could come in and show their students some animals. So I started traveling around from school to school and showing the animals, bringing bushy crabs and pufferfish and things like that. Um, and then we decided to open up a place like this so that everybody could come and enjoy the animals. Can you tell our viewers about some of the great activities you host here that are open to the public? Well, we have, um, when we're open to the public, anybody can come in and they can um, see the sharks being fed and see different demonstrations and learn about all the animals. Um, and then we also do programs so that scouts, boy scouts and girl scouts can come in on special nights and learn about the animals too and earn badges and patches. Um, and then we also do birthday parties, and I think that's how you first learned about biomes, right? What is the most bizarre fish you caught in local water that is not native to Rhode Island? Well, we get a lot of different animals that aren't from Rhode Island because they um, they get carried up from the south with warm water uh, by currents, and then they end up living here during uh, during the summer. And what we like to do is try to catch as many of these animals as we can, of these really uh, colorful, interesting fish, uh, before they die in the winter because it's too cold here. Uh, but one of the most interesting that we have is probably the lionfish. And I can show you that later on if you want. Right? Mr. Hall, when I first came in, I was drawn to um, marine Oh, the, man the mangrove tank. Yeah. Yep. That is, uh, those are fake trees that, are, uh, that were made to look like mangrove forests, which are forests that grow into the, uh, into the salt water, and all of the animals like to spend a lot of time in the roots, and there's a lot of place, places to hide, and a lot of, like, a lot of things to, uh, to eat for. Do you think you could take us on a little tour to see some of the other fish here? Sure. Do you want to start with the mangrove tank that you just talked about? Sure. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, here's the mangrove tank that you were asking about. And can you see how see how the sticks go down into the into the water, and then all the fish will um, will swim in and out of the in and out of the roots so that they can um, so that they can hide. I have a question about um, this fish. Why did it why they can see in his eye. This is called a, it's called a big eye. That's the name of the fish. And he's, his eyes are so big like that because he needs to be able to hunt at night. So he, those big, big eyes can see even just a little bit of light that the moon shines out. Okay, so um, these, are, some, these are some horseshoe crabs. And uh, they're, uh, they're very gentle. So you can, even though they look a little scary, you can pick them right up. Um, we like to pick them up by the sides. You want to try it? And then we don't want to pull them out of the water. You can just kind of flip them up right at the surface. Um, so I've been told that horseshoe crabs swim upside down. Is that true? They do. They swim upside down using these flaps right here. See them? And those are actually their gills. Okay. They use them to breathe in. Oh, the yeah. Yep, there he goes. And this one is a boy. And you can tell because hold it up for me. See the first legs right there? They have, it looks like a little club. So that's the boy. And then with the girl, the girl only has a female, um, has claws that are, front claws that are just like these other ones. So they're not 
so when they pitch you, does it hurt? No. Put your hand right in there. And the tail is, a lot of people think that that tail is used to uh, protect itself, but the tail is only used to turn itself over if it's upside down. So if you take this one and you put them on its back, you'll see them bend that tail back. See that? Bend the tail back, and that will help them. And it just gets right over with that tail. What type of sharks are these? These are called um, chain cat sharks. And these are the mellowest sharks you'll ever see. Is, is that sharks sleeping up there? Yeah, they love to sleep on the rocks. I don't know why. What's, the, what's the horseshoe crab's main diet? Mostly um, worms and little things that they find buried in the sand as they um, as they crawl along the bottom. So these are very small sharks. You want to see our other sharks? Sure. All right. Okay. So these are bigger sharks. These are called dogfish sharks. And these are the most common types of sharks that we have um, in Rhode Island. And they're uh, very gentle. You, they'll come right up to you, and you can pet them. Sometimes they jump up when they get excited, especially if they think they're going to be fed. Tom, why don't you uh, why don't you feed them? So they're going to get some um, they're going to get some little frozen fish that we brought out. For them. So you can take some of these and just kind of scatter it all over the. when they smell it, watch how fast they start swimming. There they go. You think they, how do you think they find the food? Like? How do they smell it? All by smell. So, do you have any other things here besides the marine life? Almost everything that we have here is um, marine life from Narragansett Bay, but we have a few special animals um, that we've actually rescued. Um, animals that weren't taken very, uh, somebody wasn't taking very good care of them, so we rescued them and bring them here and make them better. Do you want to see some? Sure. All right, so here are some of those fish that aren't from the ocean. And these are frogs, but these are special frogs. They're called poison dark frogs. And these are found in the Amazon jungle, and they're one of the most poisonous animals in the, in the world. I and see. it's the, I see red one green, I see red one here, green one here, and then two yellow. Yep, we have three different kinds. Um, this is called a bumblebee frog, dark frog. And their skin is very poisonous, and in the, um, in the jungle, they can use these to hunt for their food, the people that live in the Amazon. And what they do is they take an arrow they take an arrow that they make and they rub it on the skin of the frog and then they have this which is called a, a dart gun a blow gun and they put the arrow in and it has poison on the tip and then they blow into it and that's how they come from their food. Do you want to try using one? Sure. Right. So I'll, I'll do it first and Get the arrow in there, and there's a target. Want to try it? Sure. Okay, aim high, and you can really go high. Good job. This is the puffer fish right here, and the puffer fish to protect itself by filling itself up with water so that it gets so big that another animal will be able to swallow it. But to make them do it, I have to trick them. I have, I have to make them think that something's trying to eat them. And so what I'm going to do is grab them with one hand, and I hold them very gently so I don't hurt them. And then with the other hand, I just very softly tickle his belly. And when I tickle his belly, he thinks something's trying to eat it, so he starts swallowing water. What advice 
to go to college for um, biology so that you can learn about all kinds of animals and how they, how they act and how they work. Um, and then you can narrow your focus back into, um, into marine life if that's the direction you want to go in. I think it's really great how you're using your local marine life to educate children and spark their interest too. I know I've been hooked since I was four and hope to become more involved here at Biomes as I get older. And I think someday you might be our youngest employee. This is a fantastic test we landed for WOTLRI. I know I'll be back. So thank you, Mr. Hall, for sharing your story. Well, Thomas? Yeah? You know what time it is. Of course. It's time to say... Toodles!